do because my false teacher, he told me, my pastor, you know, he likes to drink alcohol and listen to country music and, and he loves God and, you know, he says you can go to soccer games and worship there and skip church and, and still make it to heaven. False. Wrong. That's a lie. The devil has no shortage of people to fill people's ears with lies because tickling ears are still going on. People are still desiring someone to confirm their flesh, someone to confirm their desires, that they can still please God, love God, serve God. But God says, no, you have to turn away from sin. You have to repent. Repentance is necessary. Repentance is not optional. A lot of people don't want to repent. They think they can turn over a leaf. They think they can go please their grandma and go to church, still be smoking dope on the weekend, still be shacking up with some woman that's not their wife, living in fornication. My friends, if you choose that road, it will be to your destruction. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, The drunkard shall not inherit eternal life. The sexually immoral, the fornicator, will not inherit eternal life. You will not go to heaven. It doesn't matter what your mother says, your grandma says, or what your false religion says, because the Bible today is the ultimate authority, and His Word will not fade away. And God is trying to deal with you today because many of you will not hear a gospel message. You'll go to a church, and you'll hear four points on a sermon about someone telling you how it's okay to live in the world, to love the world, and not flee from sin. But I'm here to tell you the opposite. I'm here to tell you that God demands complete obedience and submission. God demands that you repent and surrender your heart and your life and say yes to Jesus. Jesus clearly says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But if you are one to worship idolatry, worship soccer or football, you don't know Jesus. Because Jesus wants all the worship. He's not going to share his throne with the thrones of men. He's not going to share his throne with the material things that will fade away and be destroyed. God will destroy this world. He is going to pour out His wrath and His judgment upon the ungodly, like as the days of Noah, God sent a flood on the earth, not so you could hear a story about a boat with some animals, but it was about judgment. Because men had corrupted themselves. Violence covered the earth. The sad thing is, is today, many of you love violence. You like to watch ultimate fighting. You enjoy boxing. You like to watch movies with rapes. And horrible violence you're entertained by kidnappings and all kinds of filth on a television screen and that just lets you know that you're a part of that crowd the Bible says it shall be as the days of Noah violence cover the earth God will not only baptize the world with water like he did in the days of Noah he's gonna baptize it with fire the Bible says God will bring a holy judgment upon this world for all its iniquity for all its immorality God is trying to get your attention. Many of you have no ears for the gospel, but one day you'll remember July 3rd, and you'll have plenty of ears for it, but one day it'll be too late. Today is your opportunity. Tomorrow might not come. Some of you might think you're invincible. You're young. You think you're going to live to 85 years old. You're not promised tomorrow. The obituaries are full of people that thought they had more time. Some people didn't make it out of college. Some people didn't make it to their 40th birthday. No. You need to repent and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ can set you free. The Bible says in the last days there would be mockers and scoffers. You fulfilled prophecy. One day you'll remember July 3rd. Either you'll remember it to your salvation or you'll remember it to your destruction. It's your choice. Your blood won't be on my hands, though. You've been warned to flee. Flee from idolatry. Flee from youthful lust. Flee from blasphemy, flee from cursing, flee from drunkenness, flee from sexual immorality. God created marriage with the intention of a man and a woman, not two men, not two women. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. No such thing as transgenderism. God doesn't make mistakes. The devil will lie to you and tell you a lot of things, though. I haven't. Why not? I just think it's unclean. You think it's unclean? Yeah. Okay, but you don't think it's a sin, you think it's unclean? Huh? You don't think it's a sin, you think it's unclean? Yeah, do you believe it's a sin? No. Okay, so why are you well, asking? Because just curious. homosexuality is a sin, like it says in the Bible. 
Also says having sex with your wife on your period is a sin. So you're gonna pick and choose? Okay, so do you believe all the Old Testament? Do you believe all the Bible? I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out your hip hip like how you're hip That's all I'm saying. I okay, let's let's stay on this. Let's stay on this. Let's let's have a reasonable conversation. So here's the thing. So all, you know the Old Testament also says to stone people in adultery. Do you believe that? No, I don't, but my question is if you're gonna say that that's the way you should live your life, I'm a Christian, but I say if that's the way you're gonna live your life and that's that's the law of the land. Who, why are you going to play God and pick and choose what's right or wrong? I don't, okay, think, I don't let's think Let's stay on right. topic. You brought up the, the era of, of menstruation, right? You right. say that's that a sin. That is topic. You say that's a sin. No, I don't say that. I don't think it's a sin, but I say by your logic, by your logic saying homosexuality is a sin, by your logic, that should be a sin as well. And that's why I think you're a hypocrite. That's you're saying it's the same thing. Homosexuality and menstruation well, is the same it's thing. it's in the Bible. Just re read the rest of the chapters. It's in the Bible. I read the, I read the Bible. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, okay. So yeah. how is it the same thing? Menstruation because it's put and homosexuality. Because, because homosexuality it, because is abomination. It, because in the same chapter, in the same chapter, if you've read the book, which I it doesn't seem like you have, because in the I same have. chapter, it yeah. says that it's a sin. So you're going to pick and choose. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm not picking and choosing. I'm just reading in context. I think context right now so, is a little bit of a challenge for well, you. I think, but I think for you to speak out and say that people are living their lives in sin and, and you're going to call them more or less bad people, I think that's wrong. Because I think that's you saying that I can pick and choose what is the law of the land. And I don't think that's right. No, the Bible's right. And that's why so, I'm saying but, idolatry, but only, idolatry only, is a sin. But it's partially right in your words. Because you're saying because you're saying homosexuality is an abomination of sin. It is. And so, that's and what it, Leviticus says. Right, but keep right. Have you, have you read the next two verses? Because that's where it's listed, so that's where, that's where I don't agree with you. That's all I'm saying. I'm, not, I'm not trying to confront. I'm just you saying. can disagree, right. but the only problem is you don't have the Bible. That's the only problem. That doesn't make any sense. If you have the Bible in your hand, you obviously have the The Bible says Leviticus 19 says it's an abomination. Right, but it also says the same about... But here's the thing. Oh, my gosh. So I guess critical thinking is not something you do either. No, I just follow the Word of God, and I know how to read. Clearly not, because it's two... Do you want to read it? Do you want to read it? I'm just reading the book. If you want to run away, just run away. You don't have an argument. Just come over here and talk. I want to have a conversation with you, but you ran off. Okay, that's fine. Keep going. So here's the thing. Either you'll believe the truth of God's word and have a sound mind, or you can have a mind that's been corrupted by all kinds of reasonings and ideologies and arguments that are persuaded by people that love the world. This world will tell you that homosexuality is normal. Homosexuality is not normal. Two men cannot produce a child. Two women cannot produce a child. It takes a man and a woman to reproduce. That will let you know that that's against nature. God says it is an abomination. And God says that today that you can know the truth, that you can be set free, that you can be in the righteousness of Christ and be pure and holy. There's all kinds of illogical things that people are holding to. But Jesus Christ, he can, he can fix anything. He can fix people's minds that have been just infiltrated by the lies of the enemy, and he can break loose those chains and all those arguments that the enemy has brought. He can set free. It's not too late for you. Some of you are sitting on the fence. You're sitting in between the valley of life and death. Some of you are saying it sounds good. Maybe you heard it from someone, but you're still not committed. You're still just kind of holding back. There's a lot of things that will keep people's hearts, that will keep them from saying yes to Jesus and no to the world. There's all kinds of distractions, diversions. Some of you have unforgiveness and bitterness to family members. Some of you have unforgiveness against former bosses. If you don't forgive people, God won't forgive you. You can go to church every single day of the week and hold on to unforgiveness and still have hatred and bitterness in your heart, the Bible says that is the same as murder in God's sight. You see, God can make your heart full of love. It's not that people aren't going to hurt you. People will do you wrong. If you haven't figured that out, people will turn their backs. People that you trust will turn away. But Jesus, he will never turn on you. He will always do what's right for you.